Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to introduce you to the basics of the Popcorn FX plugin for iClone 7.2. Right, so there's a lot of stuff to get through. I'm going to start from the basics and explore the various uh, new stuff that will be included. So let's just jump right into it uh, by introducing the new folders that you'll see in iClone 7.2. So over in your set tab, under your particle folder, you'll find a number of different separate folders. So let's just expand this a little bit since this is what we're focusing on right now. In the legacy folder, we have all the particle effects from iClone versions 3 through 7. You can find all this stuff right here. Really cool particle effects that'll take you down memory lane if you're a long-time iClone user. Okay, so these are the various stuff we've accumulated through uh, versions 3 through 7. All right, so these are the legacy, all the, all the legacy folders, the typical uh, traditional iClone stuff. All right, and then we'll also have the popcorn effects learning samples, okay? So this will come with the plugins. And in the learning samples folder, you'll find functions. So the emitter settings right here, these are basic, the very, very basics. Uh, these basically, each one corresponds to a separate attribute that you can find in the settings that we'll explore a little bit later. So each one is a very, very basic and simple explanation of one separate uh, parameter or attribute. And we'll talk about those a little bit later. So there's particle settings here as well. Um, we'll, we'll explore these more in part two of this tutorial. And there's text as well. Okay, and beyond that, in part in uh, folder two here called applications, we have the functions expanded upon and more they're more beautiful and now they're being used in some really cool samples like this. Okay, so you can see uh, some nice ribbon stuff, some uh, text emitter uh, projects. You even have the matrix digital ring and stuff. So there's a number of different uh, kind of samples here that expand upon the functions. So the functions are the very basics, kind of explain the concepts, and the applications are the more beautiful and uh, awesome looking examples. And we'll explore those again, like I mentioned, in part two of this tutorial. Okay, and below that we have the Popcorn FX Library 40. This is a content pack that you can purchase from our content store. Some really, really cool stuff in here. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, cool magic effects. Uh, basically stuff you could use for almost any project. Uh, a number of different nature things like uh, some really cool stuff in here as well, like skin cr or bugs crawling on the mesh. I think that one's really kind of creepy and cool. Uh, weapons and explosives here as well. Um, just basically any, anything you would possibly need for your project, uh, VFX, uh, various VFX as well. Okay, and beyond that, we have the Hopcorn FX Super Tools. Now, these come with the plugin, like I mentioned, and there's the distortion emitter, mesh emitter. This is where you can start from your own custom uh, basic template and kind of build upon that, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in this tutorial. Now, the one we're going to be using for this uh, tutorial is the texture emitter. Since there's a lot of parameters you can uh, we can go through and explain, so let's go ahead and just double click that and add it to our scene root. Okay, and let's make our library a little bit smaller here, something like that. Okay, and if I press the W hotkey, it'll find our uh, little gizmo there, our little uh, dummy for our uh, popcorn emitter here. So this little dummy here is basically where all the particles will emit from uh, to start off with, okay? So that's, that's all it really is. Don't have to worry about the what color it is, what shape it is. This is just basically where the particles come from. Okay, now to take a look at the attributes to find all the stuff that you can customize, you need to go over here to the popcorn tab, all right? And you'll find a number of different sections here. The emitter, sec uh, the emitter settings right here. Now the emitter settings, the emitter and the emitter settings sections, this is basically for adjusting the area or the shape of your actual emitter. Now you can use a mesh as an emitter. You can use a various, uh, you know, preconceived area as an emitter. And there's lots of different values you can go into. Uh, we'll talk about those a little bit later on. And then there's particles. There's particle mode, particle, particle, and particle settings. All right. Now these correspond to the actual emitted particles that emit from your emitter, I guess. Okay. So this is where you modify the actual particles themselves. And there's a couple of examples up on the screen for you here. All right. So let's take a look at uh, the basically changing your particle textures first. So since we're focusing on changing the particle texture first, we need to go into particle. All right. So in the particle section here, we'll talk about particle mode a little bit more in separate tutorials. Uh, but we'll, we'll deal with it a little bit in this one. Okay, so in particle, you'll find a couple of different items here in a particle column and a type right here. So basically what the additive 1 means and additive 32 means, this is basically under particle mode, you'll see a sprite atlas. It says use 8x4 sprite atlas. Now, if I simulate this, uh, you can go up here and click this button or you can press shift S, 
which I'm going to be doing in this tutorial since it's a lot easier, okay? You can see we're emitting some numbers. You're probably like, where the heck did those numbers come from? Well, they use a sprite atlas or a sprite sheet in this uh, additive 32 section in the resource list, okay? You can see the numbers right there. Okay, now they're currently restricted to one through four. You can see the sprite max is set to four. You can set that to like five or six and you'll see sixes and nines and stuff start to come out as well, okay? Uh, so don't worry about that for now. Let's just leave it back at four. Okay, so that's where that's all coming from. Now, if you deselect, use 8x4 Sprite Alice, it's going to be emitting these like weird looking ovals. You're probably like, where do those come from? Well, these come from this additive section right here with this uh, little diffuse uh, map, uh, diffuse map in the diffuse channel, okay? And then there's some alpha blend uh, channels and stuff as well. We're not going to worry too much about those right now. But uh, what you want to know as well is that uh, on the right hand side, the type, the unlit refers to uh, self-illumination that is already at 100. So basically the particles are emitting their own self-illumination. Whereas something that's lit basically requires the lighting of the scene to light it up. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, and then we have uh, the align mode. You could face the camera, vertical, horizontal. We talk about that in a separate tutorial. And the blend mode. So here it's additive. So you set it to additive. You can set it to alpha blend right here. And this is that. that's this one right here. Okay, and you can set to... Uh, um, you can see it's, it's at lit right now, so it's not, it's using the, needs the light from the scene to light it up. And then there's like alpha blend unlit as well. So that's this one right here. Okay. So this is the self illumination, uh, setting right here. Okay. So that's the basics. Uh, you probably, you know, a little bit confused as to what all these things are. And that's the basics about it. We're going to talk a little bit more detail about this in other tutorials. But for now, that's all we're going to worry about because I want to focus on changing the, uh, texture of our particle. All right. And that can be done by going to the additive one right here. Make sure we're in blend mode additive. And what you want to do is just replace this channel or this map right here. All right. So it's simple. It's a simple oval right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and load into my explore window here. And I have an image of a blue circle. All right. Now keep in mind that this image is 256 by 256. I'm going to actually open this in Photoshop right now. Okay. And in Photoshop, you'll see in just a moment that it is indeed 256 by 256. So it's just a Control, Alt, and I. And that'll open up our image size. You can see it's 256 by 256. All right. That's going to come in handy in just a moment here as we go back into iClone. And uh, rather, we need to go back there into our Explorer, rather. And I'm going to click and drag that blue circle dot PNG. Click and drag it into our Diffuse channel right there. So now we replace that oval with a blue circle. All right. Let's uh, Shift S to simulate. And now, lo and behold, we are shooting out blue circles. All right. Pretty fun stuff. That's how easy it is to replace the texture of your particle. All right. Now, if you wanted to, you know, emit smaller spheres, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to make a smaller sphere on your actual image itself. Okay. If you want to avoid any global scale issues, we'll talk about global scale a little bit later on. But let's uh, shift S and then uh, just stop that simulation. Let's go back into Photoshop here. And I'm just going to use my magic wand tool up here to uh, select my blue area. We're going to press Control T to transform it. And I'm going to just uh, hold Shift and click and drag to make it a lot smaller. Teeny tiny circle. Press Enter there. And then we'll just bring it up here until we get a nice grid in the middle, relatively in the middle. Control D to deselect. So we have this blue particle in the middle. Let's just file and save this as. And save it as a PNG. Let's call it smaller or little brother circle. All right, there we go. And go ahead and save that. Okay. I will close down Photoshop anymore. Uh, right now we don't need it anymore. And what I'm going to do is click and drag that smaller blue circle or little brother circle rather into the diffuse channel. And once we do that, if we shift S to simulate, now we're shooting off really small looking particles. All right. Wowzers. Those are pretty small. Okay, so that's how you can really just, uh, you know, modify the texture that you're emitting uh, from your emitter, all right? Again, in the particle section. All right, so let's take a quick look at the emitter settings now for the distribution and spread of our particles. So again, if we shift S to start our simulation here, we're shooting off those uh, same old particles upwards on our Z-axis. If we go over to our popcorn effects tab here, let's open the emitter settings, all right? So in the emitter settings, you'll find a number of useful uh, attributes or parameters here. The most useful being the quota and the emit rate. So the quota is essentially how many particles can be on the screen at once. 
and the emit rate is how is the rate at which those particles are emitted essentially okay so if we changed our emit rate to five we're going to be shooting off less particles as long as the quota is higher than the emit rate you don't really have to worry about the emit rate being affected it's going to constantly shoot off uh, the amount of particles that you have on the emit rate all right so there's not going to be any interruptions all right we change that emit rate to something like 50 and then we'd have even more particles being emitted or even a value like of 100 and even more particles being emitted. Let's change that to a value of 500. And you can see we have a much thicker stream of particles emitting from our dummy. Now, if we change the quota in this example here to like 200, for example, we're going to be shooting off particles intermittently because there's only allowed to be 200 particles on the screen at once. As soon as those 200 particles disappear, it's going to shoot off more. All right. Just like that. So if you change, you can change this to a value of like 400 and you're going to have, you know, uh, longer and more frequent bursts like this. So if you want to have like bursts, you can mess around with this quota uh, value and the emit rate value. You can change our value to like a 5,000, for example, and it's going to just shoot off really intense bursts just like that. It like could be 500 on the quota. You get, you know, thicker bursts like that because it allows, you know, more to be uh, produced. All right. However, we can change our quota to like, as long as the quota is above, so like 10,000, for example, you know, we're going to be producing a steady stream of particles just like this, all right? So I think everyone can be happy with this beautiful fountain of particles. So that's essentially uh, quota and emit rate, all right? Now, if you uh, go ahead and go to the bottom now, you can take a look at spread, all right? So spread is basically essentially what it means. It dictates how the particles are spread out. So I can change my spread to a higher value, and you can see we can create, you know, Cool looking mushroom clouds like this, all right? Woo, all right, pretty cool. And uh, again, this can be keyframed, so you can do that as well uh, by keyframing it. And if you change your spread to zero, you can see a value of any less than zero will create a spread in all directions, okay? So there you go. Now we're spreading off in all directions. We have the particles bouncing off the ground there a little bit. And you can move your emitter around the screen and just spray blue particles everywhere, okay? And uh, fun stuff, all right? If you change your spread to a value of one, it's only going to be spreading off in all the directions on the positive axes, okay? So it's not gonna be negative Z. Uh, it's not gonna spread along the negative Z axis here. All right, so keep that in mind. Let's just change our spread to something a bit more reasonable, like uh, maybe 30 or something, or 0 0.3 rather. And let's take a look now at the spread ratio. So the spread ratio basically, right now it's at a value of one, and we have this, the same spread in every direction. However, if we change our spread ratio to a value of zero or something close to zero, you'll notice that if we're along the y-axis here, the green y-axis, it gets a little bit more narrow. Okay, so we can change that all the way down to zero. And now it's from the y-axis, it seems like a straight line. But from the x-axis, we get a nice fan out of uh, particles emitting just like this. All right, and you can use the E hotkey to uh, change it to a rotation gizmo and just kind of, you know, shoot off a sprinkler effect like this, all right? Pretty cool. And again, this, all this can be keyframed and animated in your scene. So that's really all there is to spread ratio. Let's just change our spread ratio back to a value of, uh, of one there. And what we're gonna focus on next, let's just press Shift S to end the simulation there. We're gonna focus on volume. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna just start the simulation actually again here. So if we wanted to, we could change our spread value to zero, and that's going to be like a straight line, just shooting upwards. Let's change our uh, little dummy value there to zero on all the uh, rotation axis. Just so it's shooting straight up, and you're probably wondering, hey, why is it shooting straight up? And the reason for that is because under the direction section here, we have the z value, x, y, z, correspond with these three parameters right here. The z value is at one. We can change that to negative one and it'll shoot directly downwards. And we can change that to uh, zero and it's still shooting downwards. And you're probably wondering why that is. Well, that's because of a pesky little thing called gravity. All right, you can move it around like this and create some you know, cool looking patterns like that. So the reason it's falling like that is because of a pesky little thing called gravity, like I said, and that gravity parameter can be found in particle settings under force, all right? With this force section right here. You can see gravity is at zero, negative 0 0.25. If we change that to zero, we're going to create a little ball of energy, which we can expand 
by uh, going up to the top here and using the emit volume. So let's change our emit volume to 100 on the x-axis. All right, so now we're shooting off a uh, nice lightsaber or light staff of light just like this along the x, the red x-axis. And if we change that to 100 on the y-axis, now we have a flat plane just like this. And we can move that around and create, you know, sort of cool effects like this and uh, up and down as well, just like that. Oof. All right, pretty cool stuff. If we wanted to create a box, then, while well, you probably guessed it, we can just use a value of 100, or rather a cube, rather, a value of 100 on the z-axis. Now we have this sparkling blue cool-looking cube. All right, good stuff. And again, we can move that cube around. So that's really all there is to volume. Okay, so you can create your own cube of volume. You can also use the mesh emitter to emit, uh, you know, in the shape of a mesh. But this is... Uh, what you can achieve without the mesh emitter, just creating a nice cube like this. And you can create, you know, like uh, gusts of blizzard snow just by doing something like this, by animating your, uh, you know, parameter, or by animating your emitter just like this. Okay, let's take a look now at direction. So we talked about a little bit about direction before, but uh, if we change our direction now to like, you know, one on the x-axis, it'll just shoot off into this direction, okay? And basically these values are pretty much absolute. So you can have a value of like zero or one. You shoot that direction or that direction on the x-axis. Let's change it to a value of one. And uh, you can see we can just uh, you know, move it around uh, on the x-axis. And it'll just you know, continue to flow in that direction. All right, so there's our gusts of blizzard snow just like that. Now we can also you know, uh, pump in some uh, value for the y there as well, a value of y. If we go above, you'll see, you'll see, I uh, was just zooming in a little bit. It'll go at a value of, uh, basically 45 degrees between the green Y and the red X axis. Okay. If we change our Y to like, uh, you know, 0 0.5, it'll be a little bit more focused towards the, uh, red axis there. So that's really all there is to direction. Okay. You can also change the emit position. So let's go back to a, val a value of, uh, direction of 0, 0, 0, just to give our, uh, so that was just regular cube here, a regular sparkling cube. Now the emit position just basically dictates where in relation to your emitter dummy, the emission takes place. So if I change this value to like maybe, uh, you know, one on the uh, x-axis, it's going to be uh, rather than like 100 on the x-axis, it's going to be 100 units forward on the x-axis, just like this. You can move that forward and backward, just like that. Pretty cool. We can also change it to like, you know, positive 100 on the Z axis and it'll be up there. All right. So the blue Z axis, it's pretty straightforward. You don't really need much more of an explanation than this. If you change it to plus 100 on the Y axis, it'll be over on that direction. Okay. Negative 100 on the Z axis, we'll take it down to there. Okay. So negative Z on the Z axis right there. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty standard stuff. Let's go ahead and, uh, Take all those values back down to zero. There we go. And that's really about all there is to these parameters, guys. That's all I really wanted to focus on in this tutorial. Uh, in the second part of this tutorial, like I mentioned, we'll talk about the functions and turning them into applications and, you know, creating some really cool looking effects. But for now, that's all I really wanted to explain to you is these uh, basic emitter settings and all that fun stuff. So make sure you check out our other videos on our YouTube channel and our forums at forum.relusion.com. And I hope to see you in the next video.